Hi guys, welcome. This is Kelly with Cleanly Consumed and today we get to talk to Lindsay Reno of The Primal Dietitian. Hi Lindsay. Hi, I'm so excited to be here and chat with you again today. I hope everything technically works out because I'm new to Zoom, but I'm excited. It says it's recording, so this is good. That is a good first sign. <laughs> I know. So we met back in 2013, so you have been practicing for quite a while and I know I learn things from you every time that we talk. But today we're going to really kind of dive into supplements and are they necessary and should you just be taking them blindly or why having targeted nutrition and a protocol with someone like you is really key. So absolutely dive in and see um, supplements, are they necessary and why do you think that someone shouldn't just blindly be taking them? Sure. Well, I think in a perfect ideal world, right, if everything could be perfect and the soil could be rich in nutrients, we wouldn't need supplements, right? Because we would get all of our nutrients from food. If we didn't have any stress in our lives, we wouldn't need extra nutrients to create extra serotonin and dopamine for all that stress, right? But we don't live in those perfect conditions. So that's what I always tell my clients. Sometimes, yes, we do need some help. Um, and I'm not talking about we're needing to take 12 and 18 supplements per day. But sometimes we do need an additional boost during times of stress or for kiddos during growth and development or for just other benefits like cognitive function, blood sugar balance. There's certain nutrients that we can get from plants in a more therapeutic dosage form, I should say, that can give us those benefits. Um, but yes, we, we don't live in that perfect world, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, so sometimes we do need a little bit of help, for sure. Right, exactly. I think that people think that they can get all the nutrients they need from certain foods, but the thing is, is then you need to know which foods you need to be eating so that you can find your balance. <laughs> exactly, yes. Um, and so for absolutely correct, because there are certain foods that can not only trigger inflammation in some individuals, but then there are some foods that can act actually speak to our DNA and actually reverse signs of aging, reverse signs of inflammation. And it's all individually based, based off the individual. Um, and I don't know if you've ever tried to do an elimination diet on your own. It is oh very gosh. difficult and painstaking. It's possible. I've, I've done that with my clients, but um, there are easier routes to do. Um, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And I don't think people, and well, and as far as the food sensitivities, I don't think people realize the ingredients, not the foods that you're eating, but also the ingredients that are in supplements and things like that. Um, why should someone consider a supplement and nutrition protocol? And when I say protocol, we kind of lightly touched on um, the foods and the medications and herbs and everything that someone's taking collectively and um, how that those, how those complement or don't complement each other. Sure. So a protocol is going to be made for the individual, right? It's going to be specifically tailored for them. And then a practitioner like myself or someone else that's licensed is going to actually pick out specific brands that are going to be free of harmful chemicals, free of food sensitivities. There's so many even good quality brands out there that might have whole food products in there that one person could be sensitive to versus the next person. Not to mention, you know, just the average person going to Walgreens or CVS to pick up a supplement. A lot of those supplements aren't third party tested. So meaning you don't know that what it says in the bottle is actually what's in the bottle. And you also don't know if there's harmful chemicals that, you know, are listed on the bottle or also on the bottle as well. Um, so that protocol is going to be specifically tailored for the individual. They're going to get a timeline of how long they're going to be on that certain supplement, when they should expect to see results, what that specific, what the results specifically would be. Um, and, and that way they can, you know, monitor progress more efficiently. Exactly. And I think that that's a good first step for someone going into a pharmacy or Whole Foods and sure. going to get a supplement. And that means that there are they're walking into self-advocacy for health, but... Um, right. No, it is, a, it is hard, and it is a good first step. And, but they could um, be hurting themselves. <laughs> they could be, which is really sad and unfortunate. And I think that, um, unfortunately, you know, I, I see all the, the supplement um, advertisers, even online, and they're advertising gummies and things like that. And they're kind of speaking to our vulnerability, which is our health and our children's health. And we want to do make the right decisions, and we want to do the right things. Um, but unfortunately, 
you know, there's a lot of hidden information. There's a lot of information that's hard to kind of decipher and pull through. And so for the average person, even myself, sometimes I forget to read labels and I bring something home and I'm like, wow, I really don't want to be eating that. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm, I'm upset at myself for doing it. So it, we're all human, but unfortunately they kind of capitalize on that fear tactic and are just lack of knowledge regarding that industry and, and can use that to their advantage to sell products. Oh, I was laughing because um, we will, we will go to, you know, wherever we buy our supplements or if we have them on auto ship and, you know, we make mistakes too. We, oh, for sure. it's a constant struggle, you know, it's a constant balance of, you know, knowing what you need. Okay. And then as far as GI, we, there's a lot of talk about probiotics and, and GI. And um, how about the um, integrity of your gut and the lining and malabsorption? How does that play a role in the nutrients that you're actually getting from what you're taking? Oh, absolutely. So that's going to be a major cause of nutri nutritional deficiencies is how well we're digesting and absorbing. Um, so whenever I sit down with a client, I always walk through the whole intestinal tract, whether they're comfortable with it or not, and I make sure to make them comfortable. It's, it's very telling of nutritional status, I always say. So if we're noticing some undigested food in the stool or if we're noticing some other symptoms like bloating or acid reflux, these are usually some signs that we're not digesting food efficiently, which means we're likely going to have some nutritional deficiencies that can lead to all sorts of other things like autoimmune and fatigue and all sorts of other symptoms just because we're not digesting properly. So absolutely can make, make a huge difference, play a huge role. Right. And then and by having that conversation with your clients, then you can go down that route rather there's some enzyme concerns or the microbiome balance concern. Right. It always makes sense to kind of discover what that, sorry, but I have a little furry friend that just walked by. <laughs> um, it always makes sense to go towards the root cause, right? So it's great to find out, oh, we have all of these deficiencies, but we want to find out what's causing the deficiencies, right? Rather than just masking it and just taking the supplement indefinitely. Yes, you'll get some good results, but unless we're uncovering that true cause, whether it be stress or digestive concerns, hypochlorhydria, which is low stomach acid, um, could be some genetic reasons. If we're not addressing those root causes, then we're just going to be chasing our tail um, regarding, you know, repletion of that nutrient for sure. Right. Right. Um, let's see. Well, you said something about, um, we were talking about the gut and, yeah. you know, I don't think people realize that probiotics will in turn create antioxidants and create their own nutrients in their microbiome world in your gut. There's a lot going on. And, it's huge, so, yeah. and, and so a supplement is also considered a probiotic. Absolutely. So I, I always like to say that we're just walking hosts because our GI tract is three to five pounds of bacteria. So that could be working for us or against us, right? And so bacteria in our intestinal tract and throughout our body, because we have microbiome everywhere, um, can play a role in everything from like the foods that we crave to our digestive health, all the way to like autoimmune diseases and migraines and hormonal imbalances. So if we don't have that right, you know, balance of bacteria throughout our body, it's going to, you know, relate to any sort of, you know, inflammation or disease. So it's hugely important for sure. And then we kind of touched on this already, but how long would someone need to um, be taking a, your protocol or, or what age should they start? How, how, what age should they start? And then how long would they need to be taking a supplement? Yeah, so I, I think we spoke about this earlier before we started. It kind of depends on the circumstances. So I use that example of like a baby born cesarean versus vaginally. So in that case, they might be starting a probiotic supplement a little bit sooner than a vaginal birth, right? Um, but it's gonna be very individualized. I always say time length wise, um, for repleting nutrients, we're looking like 90 days to potentially six months um, for taking that specific uh, regimen. If there's something that we're working with bacterial wise, or if we're, we're working to make some sort of shifts like in, you know, improving the integrity or intestinal tract, um, anything like that, maybe six weeks or so. Um, but usually we're looking beyond the two or three weeks, which sometimes we, you know, we can see differences within those first few weeks, but we really have to um, work at it a little bit longer. And as far as um, 
age group of when we can begin, it, it really just depends on the need. So for a kiddo that's, you know, two or three years old or, or four or five years old, sometimes there's certain circumstances where we do need a little bit of help beyond um, diet. Um, and especially for kiddos too, because they're going to have a lot less varied diet than we will. So they're going to need a little bit more help regarding supplements. Absolutely. And rotating, rotating your diet is, can be, oh, huge. Sure. And I know that's hard for people, you know, to do that. Sure. Especially to get their kids to do it, right? Because they finally found, okay, they'll eat this vegetable, but they won't eat all these, you know, so that, that can be a very, very difficult as well. And, um, you know, I, I think that those um, supplements, and of course, you want to be even more mindful of checking the ingredients and making sure that all those agents are in the active form. There's no chemicals or additives or any sugar or anything like that with your keto supplements, for sure. And then not everybody processes supplements the same way. I know that some people would have the genetic SNPs that yeah, that would be toxic to their body or they wouldn't be able to process it. It's junk. And so you're basically buying supplements that are toxic or are not helping. So you're just wasting. And they're expensive because, you know, they're in that like active form, right? So specifically B12 is notorious for this. So there's so many different types of B12. We'll typically find B12 in cyanocobalamin, which is the synthetic form. Most of us do not absorb this efficiently. Um, some individuals do, um, but it is a synthetic form. And then there are individuals that would prefer a methyl cobalamin or a hydroxy or adenosyl cobalamin. And that's all individually based, right? And like you said, um, someone that doesn't tolerate methyl groups, and they, if they were to take a methyl cobalamin, which is a, a very expensive active form of B12 that's good for some individuals, it can be toxic. Um, so, so that bio individually, bio individuality definitely speaks to um, as, as far as picking your nutritional supplements for sure. Right. That's why I, when people say, you know, my doctor said I needed to take, you know, vitamin D or um, they're not necessarily trained in as a registered dietitian to know, you know, how many minutes of sun they should get and then what strength they should get, how many I use, or people don't realize that there's, I mean, I'm just, I think that this is true, nine different kinds of magnesium and there's several different forms so of iron and people don't even know that. And then so many different forms of absorbial calcium. And then are they from shells um, or are, what is the calcium? Right. What is the Are they the kind that's going to absorb into your arteries or is it the kind that's going to actually help with bone mineralization, right? So there's right. different forms of all of these nutrients. There's different nutrients that help the absorption of the nutrients too. There's some you want to couple together. So yeah, and I think unfortunately with a lot of doctors and, and not all of them, they also don't have the time to check back and say, yeah. okay, how was that B12 that I recommended or what form of B12 did you, you know, most of the time, you know, they're not even going through your supplement list to even warn you or see any sort of um, errors or anything like that. So um, it really helps to get that specific regimen tailored for you or for your kiddos um, to get the most efficient results. Right. I mean, I think getting vitamin D from the sun, you know, if you're, if one is able to do that would be ideal. And then your doctor is not necessarily going to know how much to recommend, how much sun and how many I use and then how much, you know, you can get from food. I mean, that's why you're in your field and that's just not Absolutely. The that's not there. Yeah, because those are all the, the those are very time consuming things, right? To discuss yes. like, okay, we're gonna saute mushrooms in grass fed butter, and we're gonna add it to this dish. You know, that it's a little bit more time consuming, which I love to get to do to spend time um, with clients and sit down and, and you know customize their diet and their supplements and make those changes with them, um, versus just ordering them to do it and then sending them on their way. Um, it's a little bit different uh, of approach. Right. It's hard for them to stay on the protocol and to stay encouraged and, and have results that they can see. And, you know, as far as the food sensitivities, um, the testing that you usually use um, has red, green, and yellow, and they like that. They like to see what they can eat. They can also see what they can't eat, but we don't like to be told no. <laughs> no, that psychologically, that we're all the same way. We don't. So um, I always like to, whenever I'm going over some results as far as like a food sensitivity panel, um, I always like to first preface it. I say, okay, the next 15 minutes is going to be a little bit tough because we're going to give you a list of things you can't have, but we're always going to end today talking about substitutions. So I've never run a panel where I've 
looked at it and been like, okay, they're just not going to eat for the next few weeks. You know, we always make substitutions. Um, and so, like I was saying earlier, you know, although it can be really difficult to change your diet and change things that you're used to eating, that MRT or that food sensitivity panel that I run, I think it can be um, so much easier than doing an elimination diet on your own because you know, and I know from experience that sometimes we can have delayed reactions to foods. Like we can have joint pain or headaches a day or 72 hours after eating that food. And so it's really hard to pinpoint um, and, and that's all, if you're even really attuned to your body, it's, it's really hard to pinpoint what was the trigger. And so it's just nice to have that data in front of us and say, okay, this is good. This is watch out for, and this is really not so good. So we need to, you know, remove it from the diet for a period of time. Right. Unless they're eating white rice for 10 days and then bland sure. chicken with no oil for 10 days. Right. And you can do that, but it's, it's not, you know, for most people, it's not going to be realistic. <laughs> You can have a reaction several days, like you said, and then it takes several days for that to leave your body. Sure. So what, what are some of the signs of nutritional deficiencies, um, the signs that they can physically see? Sure. So I think that the biggest um, sign that I see with a lot of my clients is going to be fatigue. Because um, especially with all of those B vitamins, we're going to notice fatigue and anemia type symptoms. Um, physically, we can definitely see changes as far as like our hair and our skin and our nails. So hair uh, prematurely graying or falling out or becoming dry or brittle, mm -hmm. right? So all of those things that we, you know, think is just typical aging, maybe not so much. Um, and then dark circles under the eyes. Um, sometimes we can get rashes around the mouth, um, particularly with some B vitamins. We can certainly see some changes in the nails, like ridges and spots. Um, dermatitis can be another sign. Uh, but the, the crazy thing is, you know, when we think about the human body, we're made up of all of those nutrients, right? Mm -hmm. We're made up of CoQ10, B12, vitamin D, all of these nutrients. So any sort of symptom can be related to nutritional deficiency. So headaches can be related, vertigo can be related, joint pain, hypertension, high cholesterol, all of these things are, are nutrients are involved in all preventing all these things and supporting our body. So although there are some huge signs, there are some smaller signs that we would never normally, you know, associate with, um, with nutritional deficiencies that, you know, are, could be happening. Do you, um, Right. I think people just discount that. They just think that you're, you know, you're aging or you're a mom or you're stressed. That's the doctor's favorite thing to say. Oh, well, you're such and such age now. I have so many clients that come to see me and they're like, no, like this is not how it's going to be. But their doctor will just say, well, you're however old now. So this is going to happen, but um, it, it doesn't have to happen. It doesn't have to happen quick. And, you know, we, we should still be able to enjoy life and, uh, you know, have our energy and, and not have all these symptoms of, you know, sickness and unwell, being unwell. Right. And hopefully, you know, aging more gracefully is to where people don't have to guess your age. Yeah, aging is going to happen, right? But more gracefully. And, and the, the biggest thing for me is like, I don't mind that, you know, I'm aging. I just want to have that quality of life and have energy and, um, you know, the stamina, gray hairs and wrinkles do doesn't really bother me as much, but I want to have the energy to, to do everything. So don't have any. <laughs> um, yeah. no, no, not yet. Hopefully. Um, talk, we were talking about foods and that, that people can get nutrition from foods, but you know, and as far as coaching, sometimes what I will tell people is really focus on your drinks, what you're drinking, like obviously avoid vitamin water, um, but really focusing on water. And nobody wants to hear that, but there's ways that you can spice up your water. But then another one um, that I tell people to do is to replace their salad dressings and make them at home. So you can use herbs and add some nutrition into your salad dressings. But what I really want to talk about is I tell people to get rid of all their box cereals and you go to grandma's or wherever and they have the googly eyes of the, you know, the cute cereals looking at you. Yep. And on the label, you say that they're enriched, like all the breads that are in the stores. And so when I buy things that are commercial project and um, products, you know, kind of on my age 20 thing, when I look and if I see they're fortified, I just put them down. So um, I don't think people realize that, that when, can you kind of explain what enriched means just like in commercial products that you see in general stores? So it just means that they're adding back in nutrients that weren't there or that were, were there originally, but the, the um, wheat products or the grains have been dyed or bleached or have been chemically processed and unfortunately stripped of nutrients. So when they're enriching these products, they're adding back 
um, and unnatural forms of a lot of these nutrients and they're not bioavailable and they're not absorbable, right? So it's just a way for them to put a stamp on the box and be like, see, we're not as unhealthy as we appear. Um, we, we do have calcium, we do have, you know, some of these nutrients. But the interesting thing is, you know, the food product that they started with might have started with some of those nutrients, but it had all been stripped due to processing. So still not, um, the enrichment is still um, not a good idea and it's still not health promoting. Um, I think that as far as cereal goes, it's really hard to find good quality cereal, even if you're shopping at like Sprouts and Whole Foods. Um, but you can find some products um, that are better. I, I wouldn't call them healthy. Um, but in general, we all know this, the best foods are going to come from fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, things that grow naturally in nature have been minimally processed, and they don't have any sort of boxes or bags. <laughs> Uh, your pets are good for your home because they help your microbiome and they 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 do yeah. they they definitely bring in some some good bacteria from the uh flower beds and from the so i'm glad he made or he or she made a good i made an appearance at a good time yeah uh, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about your practice. And so I think sometimes, you know, you'll hear warnings from some practitioners saying, oh, be careful, you know, if, you know, they're trying to get you to take a lot of different supplements. I just want you to be careful. And then, um, so can you talk to us a little bit about um, how they can, how they can personally communicate with their doctor? And then I know that you would as well, but talk about that communication with their primary care professional position. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that there um, are certain circumstances where you might need a little bit more. <laughs> he's, he's very active right now, where you might need a little bit more uh, supplements. I uh, personally, um, everyone has their own kind of methodology, but I personally like to start off with very minimal amounts of the supplements. Um, I usually don't start with more than four at a time, just because I want to make sure that tolerance is met and that um, you know, everyone is individual in, in the way that they respond to certain nutrients before adding any um, in. And, you know, personally, I take anywhere from four to five, sometimes six supplements a day. If, if I have horrible allergies, because it's been pretty bad here yeah. in, in this past <laughs> spring, I might be taking more just to support my immune system. So, um, and, and again, that's the same thing with doctors prescribing medications. So um, you want to make sure that not only does all of your practitioners know what all supplements that you're on, but all of your doctors, you want to make sure that they all know that so-and-so is prescribing this and I'm on taking this for that. And, and so, yes, in some cases, the, the supplements uh, list can be a little bit more longer than we'd like it to be. But, um, you know, as long as we're starting off slow and making sure that we're tolerating them and we're taking the good high quality sources um, and we have that kind of time period of, okay, we know we're going to take this supplement for six weeks or 90 days and then we no longer need it. Um, it makes it a little bit more doable. And then also when we feel better too, because we know that we're getting our energy back and our vitality back and our immune system back, um, that makes it a little bit more helpful to keep up with that kind of um, longer list of uh, supplements, if you will. Right. And I think too, I think sometimes it's human nature to take something and I feel better and then they stop taking it. And I think part of oh. it, I, know, I feel fine. I feel fine. I don't need it. But it's really, it helps you become more in tune with your body because I think people discount how they're feeling and they're, we're too busy or we're stressed and they really don't really understand or communicate with their own body, knowing what they'll need. So for you as a, as a dietitian, you probably can wake up in the morning and, and you think to yourself, oh, I probably need a little bit of this. So even ha you have this long, you know, this approved list of things that you know your body can handle. That doesn't mean you're going to take all of the supplements on that particular day. No, no. Yeah. And, and, and I think you're right. A lot of people, I have a lot of clients that'll come in and they'll be like, oh yeah, I was feeling really good when I remembered to take my such and such or my, you know, uh, hydroxy B vitamin. I had a lot of energy and, you know, well, why'd you forget? Um, and, and I think, you know, life is, is busy and, and we just have to set those reminders and, and set some sort of specific regimen on our fridge or something like that, a schedule so that we, we can remember, okay, I'm taking it this time for this amount of days. Um, th these are the improvements that I notice when I take it. Cause that's the biggest thing. That's, that's the most motivating to me personally is when I feel better, I have less allergies, my immune system's working better. That's the biggest motivator to remember to take my, um, you know, my multivitamin or my supplements. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that's one of the benefits of being a client of yours is that they can touch base with you. You can ask them those questions because although it might seem really simple, well, how have you been feeling? Oh, I've been super tired. Well, are you still taking this and this? Well, no. And, you know, if they weren't asked that question, then they would continue to feel that way. So how does your practice work? I know you see clients in the office. Do you also see clients, teledistance, or how do you handle your appointments? Yeah, so I also do have plenty of clients that, for whatever reason, whether they're out of the state or out of the city, or they just find it more convenient to meet virtually, um, we do meet either phone or Skype. And now I love Zoom now, so maybe I'll be using Zoom too. I think it's got some really great features. Um, so that's typically what I'll do um, is see clients from my office, but virtually or, you know, I do see clients still in person. I'm located in the Galleria area. So I even have some clients that um, they have come in to see me before, but for traffic or they've got a busy schedule, we'll still meet virtually. Um, and so they still get the same exact care, um, the same exact time and, and all of that just meeting over the computer. Right. And I think too, a time you, you hit on a really good point is that time. I know there are offices and there's businesses around your location here in Houston, the Galleria, um, but there are maybe some executives or there's, you know, people that their work weeks are really long. And if they can hop on to a conference call and if they're going through a merger or um, a really stressful tax season or whatever, and they needed to support their body. It's amazing how when you support the body, how your body's able to compensate and um, work better for that period of time. So, so yeah, yeah well, this is key. <laughs> I think so. Cause even, you know, if we, if we meet for like a typical follow up 45 minutes to an hour long, we'll add in the time that it takes you to drive to my office. So sometimes, you know, I, I, I I definitely understand it. You know, I'm busy myself. And so whatever I can do to offer my clients to still get the same care, but from the convenience of their home or from another city, I, I love it. Right. And it also too, for um, the people that live in rural areas are, or have such a debilitating condition where they can't travel, if they have Parkinson's or really, it's really hard for them to get out. So I kind of feel like, I don't mean that nobody has an excuse. I just mean that no, there's probably a lot of people out there that either don't feel comfortable, don't understand what teledistance is or these appointments, or how easy it is to have them because you can actually do Zoom from a cell phone. Um, and the quality is not going to be the same, um, but you know you're going to be able to interact, and so you don't have to be you know super you know savvy with technology to be able to have an appointment. But that's definitely a plus that you offer that, and um, also that you're able to communicate with their physicians if they need that. Oh, absolutely. I think that coordination uh, with physicians is key too, especially if, if, you know, I have a client that's being followed by an endocrinologist or a GI doctor. So we, we always, you know, I, I definitely want to know what medications that they're on, you know, because that can interact with their nutritional status and supplements. And I'm sure that their doctors, you know, want to know any supplements that we start or any changes that we start as well. Right. And I, one thing that pops into my mind as far as, um, interacting is fish oil, which it's very important to have that. But if you take too much, then you're going to notice some bad effects. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and some doctors are, are really good about um, warning you before surgery. And, and I definitely, you know, if I have a client that I know is going to be having some surgery, I'll have them pull back on some turmeric or, or the omega-3 because it can kind of thin the blood. And there's, there's a few other supplements as well that can thin the blood. So clearly that's not good before going into surgery, right? Right. And I think you, you slowly, you take these baby steps into removing some of those foods. You don't have to do everything at once. And then it empowers you to be your own health advocate. But then you have this team of resources behind you, behind your back, you know, like, like yourself and your primary care physician and the resources where you have, where you, you know, purchase your products. So I will make sure in the comments below that I list, you know, a link to your site and how to reach you. Great. Right and um, the questions that we kind of went over today. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I always enjoy chatting with you and I look forward to chatting with you soon on another subject. Sounds great. I know I get questions all the time, so we'll have to get together and think about yeah, Keep them it. together, keep them you know, um, organized and we'll, we'll go through them, I'd love to. 
Great. Thanks so much. And uh, we will see you next time. Okay. Sounds good. Take care. Bye.